Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Insomnia Chronicles. This is Peter Keyes with Bill LaJoy. Bill, how you doing, man? My pleasure, Pete. Nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. So, uh, let's see. I, I don't know much about baseball, but I do know that your dad was the general manager for the Detroit Tigers. Is that correct? That is correct, um, and I don't know anything about playing the keyboard, so we're, we're on the same fucking page, man. <laughs> That's good. We're on the same okay. shaky footing. Yeah, exactly. I love it. We're on the balance beam. Nice, man. Well, what, Bill, what keeps you up at night? Well, not a lot of things keep me up at night, but my kids keep me up at night. Yeah. Uh, women keep me up at night. And uh, I really don't have a lot of worries, you know. I've been taken care of. I've done a, a good job with uh, investing my money. So uh, I sleep real comfortable in my California King 7x7. Seven seven. What do you think of the California King, man? I just, I, I've been looking at new beds, and I, I realize that the California King is actually more narrow than a regular King. Is this true? Mine is 7x7, seven seven and four people fit in it comfortably from experience. That's crazy that we got there. What keeps you up at night? We're talking about bedding, beds. Yeah, they're the, it is the most comfortable bed I have ever That's been. good, I will look into the California King. Please do. <laughs> so tell, tell me a bit about yourself. I heard, uh, I understand that you were also a, a ball player. You played in the minor leagues, yeah? Yeah, I did. I, uh, I started out as a high school All-American as a junior in high school. Like a wide receiver? Or, or no a, baseball. A goalie? You, see, you do not know anything about sports. <laughs> so let's get back to baseball. Be baseball. Let's get back to that sport. Um, yeah, I was a, uh, as a junior, 16, 17 years old, I was a high school All-American. And that uh, started to take notice of uh, major colleges. Nice. And what, my, what position did you play? I played shortstop. Shortstop. I was going to say shortstop. You know, I kind of beg. Can I play third or short or second? Just get me in the lineup. That's right. all I wanted. Right. And Just get me uh, off that damn bench, man. My senior year, our first game, we were uh, playing against a really talented kid from uh, Plymouth Canton. And all 28 teams were, uh, were there to see me and him because we were going to be high draft uh, picks. And my first uh, at bat, I dribbled one to the third baseman, ran like hell to first base because you could hear the stop clocks, the stop right. watches, right. see how fast you ran. And uh, I hit the bag wrong and blew out my knee completely. Oh, man. So I went from uh, scholarships throughout the United States to uh, begging to go to a junior college wow. after a year of rehab. Wow. That all worked out, and uh, I was fortunate enough to play after that uh, in the World Baseball Games. We went down to Miami for uh, about 10 days, and then went off to Managua, Nicaragua. Now, we're talking 40 years ago. Managua to play baseball? We were playing in the World Games. All the teams were there except for Cuba, boycotted it, but every nation was represented. What year was this? 1978. 78, okay. And so uh, we uh, worked out in the University of Miami and then flew to uh, Managua, Nicaragua, which by uh, coincidence was the same route that Roberto Clemente took. I don't know if you're familiar I know, with him. I know him, who Roberto Clemente was, yeah. But he died in the same route right. that we took to the Dominican. So... So as an athlete, I mean, I'm trying to put together the, you know, the, the through lines between like a performing musician and a performing athlete. Obviously, there's the, you know, the physical aspect of being an athlete. And then there's the mental, you know, mental aspects of being a musician. But it's still a freaking rat race, of, you know, total competition, like have to be on your A game all the time. I mean, I just can't imagine being put in a draft where I've got somebody clicking a stopwatch or doing, you know, putting a metronome on me to make sure that I'm playing on beat every beat or else this other guy gets the gig. 
that's you know that's you couldn't be more clear with that because when you're sitting there playing be, between 10 and 50,000 people you right. know and they're cheering and booing and throwing shit at you you know we're playing in third world countries right you know winter ball I'm playing in Venezuela don't they kill the losing team in those games um no actually if you give game. if you give them a piece of bubble gum you'll uh, you'll get laid that night <laughs> I'll tell you a quick, <laughs> funny story. We're at the finest hotel in Managua, and there's a six-year-old kid outside the entrance, and he's shining boots. And I had a pair of cowboy boots. And uh, he shined those things up so wonderful, I gave him $10. Well, that's like three years' salary. He retired that day. So the next day, he brought his mom and big sister so we had a good time for 30 days, uh, the three of us. <laughs> we'll end it at that. That's good, that's good. She said she was legal. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> she looks 17 or better. Wow. But I thought, in, in, I thought when I looked up the law, 14 was okay. We're... We're just <laughs> Have we wandered way off we've now? Got, we, <laughs> see the line? It's back there. It's all good. <laughs> oh, Bill, Bill. So <laughs> I just kind of don't even know where to go with that. That's, that, that's, uh, well, we ended so up. So it's a lot like rock and roll is what you're saying. It, it really is. It's, it's kind of like the old thing that we've heard forever that rock and rollers want to be athletes or movie stars right and baseball players are athletes and movie stars want to be rock and roll stars right you, you know how that game plays so yeah i mean we're never happy exactly none, none of it none of it makes you happy oh my gosh the grass is always greener but it really isn't no you take your trade and you take it as far as you can go and here I am. So, so we do the shit like our life depends on it, man. That's you know. Every single day, you have to bring yeah. your A game. Yeah, you really do. I, I, you know, I, that's the thing that I keep running into with everybody that I talk to. It's like, you know, uh, people ask me, "How do you be successful?" I say, "You do the shit like your life depends on it." Yeah. Because I mean, if you're serious about it, and if this is what you want to do, your life actually does depend on it. Like, I have to feed myself. I have to feed my kids. You know, if I'm not bringing my A game every day, somebody's going to knock me out of my place. There's 10,000 other people that can do exactly what I do easily as well, if not better. You know, I need to just be, be there, you know, show up, be present. Um, you know, there's, this is an address rehearsal. You know? It is exactly in baseball because, yeah. you know, if I'm at, tw I got released at 23. I went into Pat Gillick's office, who was the general manager of Toronto at the time. And he says, Bill, I got to let you go. I said, I got a kid here, doesn't speak a lick of English, but he's 19 and he's as good as you. Right. You tell me what I should do. And I said, I'd take the 19 year old, but why'd you release me on the last day of spring training where I could have maybe hooked on with another team? Yeah. So uh, we uh, parted, uh, I had a few tears in my eyes and uh, I called my dad up, I think sometime in, K in Kentucky. I get a little choked up, and uh, I said, uh, well, I got released, and uh, I'm in Kentucky somewhere, and I'll be home tomorrow. He said, well, you took it as far as you could. Now it's time to come home and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. So he was a shoot from the hip, whether it was his kids or it was a ball player. So, so your dad was the general manager for the Detroit Tigers? Lions, yeah, he, he actually started out with, I could tell, you know, like I told Jimmy, we could sit out here and talk for months of, at, about him. So do you think he ha suffers the same thing that we have with that, you know, every day is an audition, there is no dress rehearsal, you know, what was it like for you watching him, you know, manage a team like that? I mean, I'm sure he had the same, you know, the, the same challenges as you know as a player or a musician or a creative like constantly keeping stuff at the top of its game what was it like looking at that i mean is there anything you remember specifically? oh i remember you know hundreds of stories about you know uh, this guy plays his ass off every single game and gives me everything i got and earns his paycheck right and then i got another star 
who likes to take off two days out of the six days. Meaning, you know, he may go one for four and zero oh for four and make an error because he just wasn't there that day. Right. But it's, it's, it's a crazy business, like you said. You're always looking over your shoulder. I think his biggest struggle was balancing that 12, 14, 16 hour a day and having three little kids yeah. and on the road, you yeah. know, and how do I balance that? And I think he did a wonderful job. If he had to go see a kid, he would at least come to, to my game and watch me at least hit once or twice, watch three or four innings, and then I knew he would have to leave. Right. But, uh, and my mom, bless her heart, she was just the, uh, really the pillar of the house because my dad being yeah. gone so much, she was kind of mom and dad, but you listen to my dad because of his life experiences of uh, being an All-American at Western Michigan, signing a professional contract and playing 10 years in the minor leagues and never getting a bite at the show, right. you know? And I didn't want to be that guy, and I would have been that guy. So when he told me, you know, come on home and get a job, that's what he meant. Right. So what did you do? I went home and got a job. <laughs> there you go. I started a family, <clears throat> bought a house, and uh, started a business, and uh, had a pretty damn good childhood and, and, and growing up, especially with the people that I met. During the World Series, meeting movie stars, rock stars, it was unbelievable. You know, flying in Monaghan's helicopter where he had his helicopter pad right on Tiger Stadium. That made yeah. a goal of mine to buy one, so I did. <laughs> nice, nice, man. That's what's up right there. You know, the the balance and the family thing, I totally get that. It's... um. I just I kind of did some figuring today, and I think I've been gone as much as I've been home this year. Luckily, my kids are, you know, they're in college. They're almost grown. But, you know, while they were younger, it was really rough for me to tear myself away every week. Is hard on, I'm sure it's harder on them. You know, it's like daddy's got to split, and I'd go for like a week or two weeks, come home for a few days, try to catch up. And, you know, you leave, the house falls apart, the wife puts it back together, you come home, and they're like, why are you here? And just the whole crazy thing and it, it really you know I just had this flashback to when I was a kid in <clears throat> on the swim team my dad was a cardiologist and I was up on the block and I went to jump in and I saw my dad walking out of the out of the pool place I'm like what yeah. is he doing and I get to the end and I come back and let, later you know my mom picks me up she's like oh yeah you know uh, one of the swimmers fathers had a heart attack in the you know, in the stands oh. and your dad saved his life. And I was like, oh, okay, well that's acceptable that you left for that. But you know, the, the cool thing was, is that a year later he ended up running the Boston marathon with the guy who no started shit. to, yeah. So I was like, wow. You know, I didn't understand back then what it was, but now I get it. It's like when you're on a mission and you have something that, you know, like a purpose in life, you know, we go to any length to, to succeed at that as, I don't know if it's a creative thing or if it's a man thing, or just a human thing, you know, there, yeah. there's nothing that's going to get in the way of me doing what I have to do, but I do have to think about what I'm leaving behind and, you know, what I'm showing my children, you know, I want to instill in them a work ethic, you know, absolutely. But I also want to spend some time with them. So yeah, you know, I, I totally get the, that struggle of the balance. Like how do we make this life full, you know? Right. We'll be right back with Bill LaJoy and the Insomnia Chronicles. 